Good afternoon. Um, this is um, Anaria Sanchez again with a new tutoring about uh, compounds. In this case, we are going to see binary compounds, the first tutorial of two for uh, how to name and how to make formulas of binary compounds in this case. So uh, we will see that the binary compounds are formed by two elements, and that's why they call binary, because they are only two elements in a formula. These elements can be ionic when we have uh, a non-metal basic um, bonding to a metal, so a metal plus non-metal bonding together. And if not, we are going to have covalent when they are two non-metals bonding together. Uh, the ionic binary compounds are going to be the ones that are covered in this tutorial. The next ones, uh, the next tutorial is going to be the covalent one, so you have to wait a little bit for the other one. The covalent compounds can be a metal plus oxygen, and every time we have an oxygen, we have oxide. So in this case, we're going to have basic oxides. We are going to see how to uh, name and how to make the formulas of the basic oxides. And when the element, the non-metal, is not oxygen, we will have what we call basic salt, um, bi binary salts. Binary salts are salts that do not have oxygen, like sodium chloride or aluminum sulfide or the other ones that we are going to cover. Uh, about covalent uh, or binary compounds, we have non-metal plus hydrogen, which is going to give us the binary acids. We're going to see that later. Uh, Non-metals plus oxygen, which will give us acidic oxides, acidic oxides because they will form acids when um, when combining with uh, with water and the non-metals and uh, non-metals and other ones that are not hydrogen and oxygen and they are going to form different compounds that have different names in this case is um, phosphorus pentachloride now we're going to begin with the metal and oxygen and how to name basic oxides and then we're going to move to the metals and non-metals in general to name the salts so let's go the first one we are going to be the uh, to be covering the um, metals that are not in the transition zone so the metals have a fixed oxidation number and this metal the oxidation numbers correspond to the group number if you look at the periodic table the number that appears at the top is going to tell you the group number for that element. Now, the oxidation number of oxygen, we know that is negative 2 all the time, that is combined with, oxy with oxides or forming oxides. And the names in general, they are going to be metal oxide. So in sodium oxide, calcium oxide, whatever oxide. Now, knowing the formula, work out the, uh, I'm sorry, know, knowing the name, work out the formula. Let's say that we have aluminum oxide. We know that aluminum belongs to group 3, so the oxidation number is going to be positive 3. The oxygen is negative 2. We cross the oxidation numbers, and we will have the formula as simple as that. So you shouldn't have a problem doing that. Uh, the same with calcium oxide. We have calcium and ox oxygen, the calcium plus 2, because the calcium is the, the second group and oxygen negative 2 as always, they are going to cross those numbers and in this case in particular since the numbers are divisible we will uh, um, simplify them and we will uh, obtain the calcium oxide formula as we see it here. Now when the metals are in the transition zone, okay, like um, iron, zinc, uh, any other copper and all that, they normally work with different oxidation numbers. So we need more information. And in the name, we need to uh, specify which is the oxidation number. So again, we will see knowing the name first to work out the formula, and later we are going to see how to do it backwards. So iron 3 oxide, again, the iron is working with 3, so it's going to act with oxidation number 3. And the oxide is always negative 2. We cross the numbers, 
and we are going to obtain the formula for iron 3 oxide. Now, if the element is lead, for example, lead works with 2 and 4. In this case, this is 4. So we are going to put the lead, which is PB, the sign, the symbol, and oxygen negative 2. Again, the same case as we made with the, uh, with the calcium, we can simplify the numbers because both elements have a number that is divisible. So in this case, we'll, we'll, uh, we will have the formula of PbO2. Now, next one. Knowing the formula, name the compounds. This is the most complicated one for you, so pay attention to what I said. Uh, anyways, you, have, you can uh, check it out several times if you don't understand the first time. Uh, when we get the compound, we take the oxidation numbers and we cross them in this direction, yes? So we are going to do the opposite, um, the opposite thing right now. So um, I don't find my eraser. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, we are going to do it backwards, okay? So instead of going down, the oxidation numbers went up went up so I have 3 plus and 2 negative okay so gallium 3 oxide will be the name because these three that appears here happens to be the oxidation numbers of the gallium uh, you don't need to put the 3 in the gallium guys because um, gallium belongs to group 3 so you don't need to put the 3 that it was my mistake uh, this is tin oxide. And tin oxide, again, we are going to cross up the numbers, and we will see that for the oxygen, we obtain negative 1. We know that oxygen is always negative 2, so it means that in this formula, the numbers were simplified before. So we need to do something to fix it, and that um, fix will be done by multiplying the numbers, the, the exponents by 2. So uh, tin is going to work with positive 4 and oxygen with negative 2. So the, oxy the name is going to be uh, tin oxide, tin 4 oxide actually. In the case of the calcium, the same, we cross the numbers which are in this case 1 and 1. So we cross them up and we will see that the calcium is positive 1 and the oxygen is negative 1. Again, they have been simplified, so we need to multiply those by 2. In this case, we, didn't, we do not need to put the um, Roman number because calcium belongs to uh, the group 2. Now, binary salts. We are going to talk about regular metals first. Um, and uh, we have the uh, oxidation numbers of the nonmetal will be the number of electrons missing. So you know that if you have chloride, you are going to have negative one. Sulfide is going to be two negative because it needs two electrons to complete the octet. Uh, bromine is going to be negative one. Nitride is going to be negative three, and so on. Okay. Now, the name will be the metal and I. So sodium chloride, or uh, aluminum sulfide, or uh, um, calcium bromide. Now, knowing the name, work out the formula. How do we work out the formula? We have iron three sulfide. So the iron is going to be working with three. So we put three, and sulfide comes with sulfur and sulfide has a negative 2 charge, as we saw here up. Okay, so um, sulfur is negative 2, iron is positive 3. Again, the same exact thing. We cross the, um, the numbers, and we will have the actual formula for the, sulfur, uh, the iron sulfide, iron 3 sulfide. Remember that iron also works with oxidation number negative 2, uh, I'm sorry, positive 2. So the other is going to be 2 and so for uh, negative 2. If we cross them out, iron sulfide 
will have this formula because the tools can be simplified, but this is not the case. Lead four chloride. In this case, the lead is acting with positive four and chlorine uh, gains one electron to form chloride. So we are going to have uh, lead for chloride when we cross the numbers and we are going to obtain this formula that we have here. Now, what happens that when we have know the formula and we need to name the compound? And uh, this works for transition metals and non-transition metals, so we are going to mix and match, okay? In this case, we have a, a binary salt, iron nitride, okay? And we are going to see how is that iron nitride, which is the iron oxidation number. So we need to cross them up, and we are going to obtain the iron acting with positive 2 and the nitrogen with negative 3. So in this case, the, it's iron 2 nitride. The copper and iodine will have a copper iodide, but in this case, they gave us the formula, uh, so we um, cross the numbers to the top again, and we're going to see that the copper is acting with positive 2, so the name will be copper 2 iodide. For calcium sulfide, same thing as always. We cross them up. We have the calcium acting uh, or s seems to be acting with one and sulfur with negative one. But remember that calcium belongs to group two, so this should be two positive, and this should be one negative. So something was simplified. So we multiply by two, and we have the actual oxidation numbers but the name is calcium sulfide again. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and have a nice day.